Raja Raja Ratnam was born in Colombo, Sri Lanka. He studied in England, then came to the United States. He got an MBA from the Wharton uh, Business School. And in 1997, he founded um, the Galleon Group, which became one of the largest technology hedge funds uh, in the world, with over $7 billion in management. And then Raj, 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 Raja Ratnam got into trouble. He was arrested. He was prosecuted. He was convicted of insider trading. And the whole story is incredibly fascinating and I think a real window into uh, our justice system, or perhaps I should say our injustice system. Now, Raj has um, just published a book. I'm going to hold it up, but we're going to put it on the screen. It's called Uneven Justice, The Plot to Sink Galleon. And I'm delighted to have Raj on the show to talk about it. Welcome, Raj. Thank you for, thank you for joining me. Uh, I want to begin the story uh, with... Um, with your success, you're, you know, you're a South Asian boy, if I can say, who came to America uh, and made good. Talk a little bit about what attracted you to America and what was your American dream? Well, after graduating from England, I wanted to come here to do an MBA and some of the best MBA schools were in America. So after doing uh, my MBA at Wharton, I did. I majored in finance, and so I came to Wall Street. Um, at that time, there were very few South Asians uh, Dinesh, on Wall Street, and so I worked really hard. I worked every Saturday, and as a technology analyst initially, I visited Silicon Valley once a month for about a week and met with 25 companies each time. And then you created a, a hedge fund, which is essentially a vehicle for investing in these technology companies. You were enormously successful. Now, the 2008 crash came about, and it was essentially driven by mortgage lending. This was a crash involving the banks. It, was, it involved foreclosures. A lot of people, a lot of Americans were hurt by it. They lost a lot of money. You had nothing to do with the 2008 crash, did you? That's right. American households lost about $7 trillion and people were looking for heads on Wall Street. Um, when the new administration came in, they encouraged uh, the prosecutors to take a hard look at malfeasance on Wall Street. I had, as a long short equity manager, mortgages were in the last thing on my mind. Yeah. But let's talk about, I mean, you say that there were there was a public appetite to go after the bad guys, but it would seem on the first glance that there were two groups of bad guys. Uh, one was obviously, well, to some degree, Congress, because Congress had pushed these banks into making these sorts of loans. Hey, listen, every American deserves to own a home. You banks have got to bend the rules. So the banks go, well, OK. So you've got bankers, you've got, you've got Congress. And what you make the point here that none of those guys ever got prosecuted, ever got indicted, uh, never had to pay personal even fines or penalties, and instead they pick you, and you're, you don't fit this picture. You're, in fact, inv investing in technology assets, so you became, didn't you, a kind of a, a scapegoat for uh, ambitious prosecutors who wanted a scalp. Yep, so the die has been cast um, high profile cases are a stepping stone for ambitious prosecutors. Now, let me make it clear. I don't think the entire prosecutorial uh, profession is corrupt, but there are a few people who bend the rules because winning is more important than justice. And that's the focus of my book. Now, you talk about the fact that that if you listen to these prosecutors, and in this case, we happen to have a prosecutor in common, Preet Bharara, a fellow South Asian, if you will, Asian Indian in Bharara's case. And if you listen to their rhetoric, it makes it seem like they are um, 
Everybody else is motivated by greed. Wall Street is motivated by greed, but they are motivated by selflessness. They are trying merely to achieve social justice. They're trying to bring the bad guys to account. One of the things you bring out, I think, beautifully in this book is the enormous ambition and greed on the other side. So let me start by asking you this. When they mount these prosecutions, they go after a high-profile guy like you, what's in it for them? Well... It's career advancement. Greed is not just monetary greed. It's also power greed. If you look at uh, some of the high profile uh, US attorneys from the Southern District, you see Comey, you see um, Giuliani, Mr. Barrara, and there's a playbook. They go after high profile guys. It's winning at all costs. And they don't care too much about actual justice. In my case, they came and arrested me with guns drawn. Normally, for a white collar case, they would ask you to come with your lawyer. I was on CNN, I was on media. Mr. Barrara learned his trade as a general counsel to Schumer and he knew how to work the media. And the FBI threatened me in front of my children, told my children, you'll never see your dad again for 25 years. They wanted me to be a cooperating witness, which I refused. They gave me some inducements and the whole barrage of things at their fingertips, they threw at me, uh, including cooperating witnesses that then recanted in subsequent cases. So this system is not just, all I ask for is tell us what the rules are and play fair. Is that too much to ask Dinesh? No, absolutely. I'm, I'm quoting now from the FBI agent who arrested you. He looks at your wife and he says, your, your wife doesn't look to be that upset. She must be thinking about all that money she can spend now. So I, I want to get at here the mentality of these guys. They, have, they t seem to take a certain vindictive pleasure in sort of bringing the big guy down. And in your case, it's your, it's your American dream. It's your success that made you the kind of target of opportunity, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, just to take a step back, Dinesh, I ha we had about 180 to 200 employees at that time. We paid taxes of to over, these employees paid taxes of over $200 million to, to America. But they don't see that. I wish they had a discussion with me. I could have explained why I did the trades I did. But this was tried in the media. They made me do a perp walk, right, which is reserved for uh, mafia and murderers and so on. They lied in court many times. It was this win, win at all costs and none of them ever get sanctioned. That is the crime. Raj, let's take a short pause. When we come back, I want to delve a little further into some of the details of the case because I think it reveals the way in which this operation is carried out. We'll be right back. 